Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Dr. Lal Patra's Q2 FY24 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nishit Solanki of CDR India. Thank you, and over to you, Nishit. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Dr. Lal Pat Labs Q2 FY24 earnings conference call. Today, we are joined by senior members of the management team, including honorary brigadier Dr. Arvind Lal, executive chairman, Dr. Om Prakash Manchanda, managing director, Mr. Bharat Yu, CEO, Mr. Vedh Prakash Goel, group CFO, along with Mr. Shankar Banerjee, CEO of Suburb and another two companies. I would like to share a kind of disclaimer here. Some of the statements made on today's conference call could be forward-looking in nature, and the actual results could vary from these forward-looking statements. A detailed disclaimer in this regard is available in the results presentation, which has been circulated to you earlier, and also available on Stock Exchange website. I would now like to invite Dr. Lal to share his perspective. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Nishchand. And a very good evening and warm welcome to everyone present on the call. We are here to discuss Dr. Lal Patrab's Q2 FI24 earnings. I would like to take you through the progress that we have made and initiatives outlined to sustain our performance trajectory. Dr. Lal Patrab has been meeting diagnostic requirements of the nation for several decades, and next year we shall be celebrating 75 years of our existence. Consequently, both patients and physicians regard our brand as a trusted healthcare partner. Today, we are known for quality and accuracy, accessibility and affordability to meet testing needs of all our patients and referring doctors throughout the country. Our initiatives towards developing a model of excellence in diagnostics have not only earned us numerous accolades, but have also helped us gain the confidence of the people of India as underlined in our new marketing campaign, Bharat Ka Vishwas. Our distinctive grasp of intricate market dynamics and omni-channel presence sets us apart as we aim to branch out in underserved tier three and four markets. This along with sharp focus on leveraging a strong digital infrastructure will differentiate us as we achieve major milestones going ahead on network rollout. We have implemented a new custom built logistic solution and this product with enhancements will help us to serve our customers better. The expected synergies between the two brands, that is Dr. Lal Fats Labs and Suburban Diagnostics, are becoming stronger, and we now have a stake of significance in Western market. Suburban performance is improving day by day, and especially after the opening of the reference lab in Mumbai. The approach here is to combine our capabilities and serve as many patients as possible to offer them super specialty, high quality tests at affordable prices with quick turnaround. Our next phase of growth will be led by a combination of factors. The continuous shift from unorganized to organized is one of them. This will be supported by meticulous execution of strategy to further add to our network scale and by elevating our service standards to best in class operating processes and technological advancements. The diagnostic sector in India exhibits substantial prospects for future development, and I promise that Dr. Lal Pratt Labs will be at the forefront of this opportunity as consumers move towards more reputable brands that offer enhanced quality and best-in-class testing experience. Thank you very much. That concludes my initial thoughts. I would now like to hand over the floor to Dr. Om. Thank you. Over to you, Om. Uh, thank you, Dr. Lal. Welcome everyone to Dr. Lal Path Lab's Q2 FY24 earnings call. I'll talk to you about the company's strategic priorities and throw some light on the current business trends. At the outset, I would like to mention that COVID and COVID allied contribution to the business has fallen now just 2%. Therefore, in our headline figures, we are not reporting it separately. To further enhance the understanding of the overall P&L, we are also moving away from the term normalized EBITDA and will only be reporting one EBITDA figure as per NDS, that is net of ESOP and CSR expense. 
Now let me talk about key business trends. For the last four quarters, LPL consol consolidated revenue growth trends, both in value and volume terms, are showing healthy and steady rise. Last time we crossed the milestone of rupees 600 crore in a quarter, that was Q1 of FY22. But that was primarily driven by a 38% contribution coming from COVID and COVID alike tests. In the current quarter, again, we have crossed this milestone, but this time, COVID and COVID alike contribution is just under 2%. Our total, on total revenue basis, four year CAGR trend, that is from FY20 onwards, for the current quarter, the growth rate is 13.2%. Our strategic focus continues to be on similar lines, and I'll just uh, mention some of these uh, areas that we are focusing. I think the biggest focus for us is to go deeper. As you all know that we have a strong brand franchise in northern eastern market, and there is a tremendous amount of focus on Tier 3 and Tier 4 towns, and go wider in southern and western markets. The second priority for us is to enhance productivity and service levels to maintain sustainable competitive advantage. And as you know that as a team, we continue to look for uh, running processes which are more efficient and that show up in our margins as well. Number three, uh, we are driving participation of our partners like collection centers to drive growth. As you know, the contribution of collection center uh, business over a period of time has now become 50%. Number four, we continue to have enhanced focus on high-end tests uh, uh, in our portfolio. Number five, continue to build suburban in key markets like uh, Mumbai, Pune, and Goa. Number six, uh, keep uh, focus on, on preventive uh, healthcare test portfolio that is first fit in LPL, as, as well as uh, preventive health checkups portfolio in suburban. And lastly, leverage uh, technology to drive process efficiencies and drive marketing programs. That's it from my side. Thank you. And over to Bharat now to, to continue the discussion. Over to you, Bharat. Thank you, Om. I warmly welcome you all on this call today and wish you and your family members a joyous and healthy festive season ahead. I will now take you through the business and operating highlights. I am pleased to share with you that we delivered a robust quarter of revenue and profit growth while making good progress to our strategic growth in us. In Q2 FY24, we achieved a revenue of Rs. 601 crores, a growth of 12.6% in total revenue over Q2 last year. Net of RT-PCR test, our growth of revenue for Q2 FY24 is 14.4%. In Q2 FI24, we served 7.5 million patients, representing a growth of 5.2% over last year. And net of RT-PCR, the patient growth for this quarter is 7.7%. You will notice that our patient growth is significantly higher than our Q1 FI24 numbers. In this quarter, we tested 21.2 million samples, representing a growth of 11% over last year. And net of RT-PCR, the sample growth for Q2 FI24 is 12%. The RPP for Q2 FI24 is at 798 rupees, a growth of 1% over Q1 FI24 that is sequential, mainly due to mix. It is also pertinent to point out that Suburban Diagnostics registered an encouraging start to its growth journey by registering a growth of 10.4% excluding RT-PCR in Q2 FI24. The strong performance in Q2 FI24 is mainly on account of five key factors. Number one, market activation and execution across all geographies, including that of suburban. Our D2C program has begun to gain traction and so has our key account management programs. Number two, our investment in 35 hub labs across the country are bearing results now, and this has enabled us to process samples with better tack driven by automation. This has enabled us to gain market share in these markets. Number three, our expansion program in Tier 3 plus towns continues to show encouraging results. On the back of this response, we are planning to accelerate this journey by opening 20 plus labs in Tier 3 plus towns. This will obviously be backed by a strong collection center network expansion and market activation program. Number four, as you all know, we had launched a marketing campaign, Bharat Ka Vishwas, with the aim of fostering trust and convenience for both doctors and patients. 
I am glad to share that we have started witnessing favorable outcomes, further solidifying the trust in our brand among healthcare professionals and patients. Number five, our product portfolio focus continues to do well. SwastFit, together with ProCell at Suburban Diagnostics, delivered a robust growth of 25% during the quarter, and it currently constitutes 21% of our total revenue. The revenue from this portfolio, from this portfolio of bundle test during Q2 FY24 is at 125 crores, en route to rupees 500 crores annual run rate revenue. Our focus on growing super specialty business across various therapies and investments in building digital infrastructure has played a key pivotal role in driving incremental volumes and attracting more patients. During this quarter, we have gone live with a new custom built feature rich logistics app. On the PNL side, I continue to efforts towards optimizing operational efficiency across all cost line items and reimagining the value chain has led to improvement in profitability and gives us the headroom to invest in growth opportunities. Overall, we are moving the right levers to optimally set a growth trajectory that will give us sustainable growth. With that, I would like to invite Wei to take you through all the financial param performances and over to you, Wei. Thank you, Bharat. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining this call today. I am pleased to announce that we have robust performance this quarter, sharing some of the key highlights for the quarter and first half. Revenue for Q2 FY24 came in at rupees 601 crores against rupees 534 crores last year, same quarter, a growth of 12.6%. In first half, FY24, total revenue is rupees 1142 crores versus rupees 1037 crores last year a growth of 10.2%. Revenue realization per patient for Q2 FY24 is rupees 7.98 as against rupees 746 last year, same quarter, an increase of 7% led by price increase, tax mix, and higher contribution of SWASFIT. EBITDA for Q2 uh, FY24 came in at rupees 178 crore as compared to rupees 144 crore in Q2 FY23. EBITDA margin for Q2 FY24 is 29.6 percent versus 26.9 percent in Q2 last year. In first half FY24, EBITDA is rupees 324 crore versus rupees 261 crore, uh, same period last year with a margin of 28.4% versus 25.2% last year, same period. PBT for Q2 FY24 came in at rupees 152 crore versus rupees 103 crore in last year, same quarter. PBT margin is 25.3% for Q2 FY24 against 19.3% for Q2 FY23. In first half, FY24, EBT is rupees 270 crore versus rupees 184 crore last year, same period, with a margin of 23.6% against 17.8% last year. Add for Q2, FY24 came in at rupees 111 crore versus rupees 72 crore in Q2, FY23. That margin is at 18.4% for Q2 FY24 against 13.6% for Q2 FY23. In first half, FY24, PAT is rupees 194 crore versus rupees 131 crore last year with a margin of 17% against 12.6%. EPS in Q2 FY24 is rupees 13.2% versus rupees 8.6 in Q2 FY23. With this EPS for uh, first half, EPS is rupees 23.1 against 15.6 last year. As mentioned by Dr. Om, we are simplifying the reporting of profit numbers and accordingly, all the above profit numbers are after CSR, RSU and national depreciation because of consolidation of suburban. Net cash and cash equivalent as on September 23 is rupees 780 crore. Inventory, uh, 
uh, holding is now at 31 days and debtors outstanding is 14 days of total sales and 28 days of credit sales. ROC for the year is at 25.3%. Total capex for first half is rupees 27 crore, primarily on account of new infra and investment in technology. Once again, our continuous efforts towards improving operational efficiency has led to improve profit margins and thus provide greater opportunity to invest in under-penetrated markets, brand awareness, and future technologies. That brings me to the conclusion of my opening remarks, and I would now request the moderator to open the forum for Q&A. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Anyone who wish to ask a question may press star and one at this point. The first question is from the line of Rahul Agarwal from Incred Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, very good evening and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, you know, I had three questions, two on the business and one more structural. Firstly, uh, you know, the new slide which you put in the presentation on T3 markets. Uh, just wanted to know how do you define, you know, tier three markets and below, you know, in your mind, how do you classify that? Uh, and if you could elaborate a bit more on the accelerated program for these markets, uh, because my sense is as revenue share increases, uh, and centers take a bit of time to ramp up. Uh, how does the incremental margins look like? So that's the first question. Uh, so Rahul, I didn't get to your uh, second part of the first question, but the uh, answer of tier one, tier two, tier three, as per government of India classification, uh, as defined for I think census and HRA and so on and so forth. So we just follow the same classification. Okay. And the second part of the question essentially was, uh, you mentioned about 20 plus labs uh, getting opened into the tier three markets. Just wanted to understand as the center and these labs ramp up, uh, incremental margins, you know, how should we look at that? Because I think if you do that and the revenue share further increases from here, from 34%, how do the console margins behave? Yeah, Rahul, uh, hi, this is Om here. I actually would say that this is a typical business model which we have already always followed. You know, we open 15, 20 labs every year, and each lab that we open, it further proliferates collection center and pickup point in that area. So I would say that it's not going to make any difference. This kind of model is already baked in into our margins. However, I do take your point that these uh, centers would be in some of these uh, tier three towns. But I really don't see materially margin getting impacted by, uh, because some of, some of these places, our cost structure is also equally very competitive. It's, it's much lower than what we normally end up incurring in uh, metros. So if at all there is something in the short term, but materially I don't think it will change the overall trajectory of the margins. Got it, sir. Got it. Secondly, on the you know revenue per patient, I think uh, obviously pricing makes sense or fit. All have contributed. But anything from the Delhi NCR market looks like your core must have done better this quarter. Uh, is that true? And you know, how much was Delhi NCR's overall business? So I think quarter two, as everybody knows, that it's a it's a, a high sort of fever season, and fever is actually all across. We, we've seen the entire this year. We've seen across uh, India itself, but most of it is from northern part of markets like UP, Bihar, Delhi NCR included. So it is from everywhere, uh, especially September month. So that jump has come all across. And how much would be Delhi NCR now? Uh, Delhi NCR contribution this, this quarter is 31%. Actually, this uh, it used to hover around 34%. And now this year, we have seen a UP and Uttarakhand markets have done far better. Got it, sir. And lastly, you know, the cash is again... Growth everywhere. Goldome. 
and lastly this cash again is getting accumulated about 800 crores uh, i think will make much more money in the second half uh, any thoughts uh, how do we deploy i know you have been looking some assets into south india you have been mentioning that in prior calls but any thoughts sir? yeah i think uh, our view on uh, on cash uh, utilization has always been is a three prong one of course we continue to invest in the business organically that requirement is not very high we will continue to pay dividend as per our policy and of course we'll keep scouting for acquisitions uh, but we probably would be a little more uh, uh, sort of value driven and unless we find a quality asset at the right price we probably will be careful uh, doing acquisitions of course in order of priority south is definitely number one because the contribution from this market is the lowest uh so that's the way we'll we'll look at it right now there's nothing uh, that we can share with with all of you got it i'll come back in with you all the best and wish you a very happy diwali thank you thank you the next question is from the line of rishi modi from marshalus investment managers please go ahead hello am i audible yes 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 please go yeah so a quick bookshin first of you Could you just tell me what is your non-COVID revenue like? The way you all used to report, or uh, excluding Arctic VCR, COVID Allied, and um, B Dimer, and all those stuff. Okay, it's five eighty nine out of six zero one. Okay, so twelve crores is um, more is COVID revenue this quarter. Non-COVID is five eighty nine, and okay. COVID and Allied is twelve, as yeah. we were reporting it earlier. Okay. Um, now coming to the May growth. May I actually use the handset? Sorry, it's slightly muffled now. Is this better? Yes. Go ahead, please. Yeah. So, Om, in the last quarter's call, you mentioned that you all are expecting a smart recovery by the end of this year. Could you elaborate on what you mean by smart recovery? What growth are you all looking at? see recovery in the sense that uh, we were uh, i don't know what i mentioned last time but recovery essentially i mean on volume growth as well as value both together and uh, if you see the last four quarter trends uh, we were in negative trajectory for volume uh, now we are actually coming into very positive trajectory and if i take out uh, rt pcr volume i think uh, volume on non covid pure non covid uh, looks better and we are hopeful that uh, in times to come this will further go up and on value terms also we have seen uh, trajectory moving up of course it's contributed by a little bit on price due to price increase as well uh, but that is what i probably mean that in uh, the, the growth rates are slowly slowly inching upwards okay understood and um, like how much do you think um, we'll be able to take this notch up uh, in terms of volume value see in value as i mentioned in my opening comments if i look at last four year cagr we are now seeing about 13% growth for the quarter uh, there was a time when it has fallen before uh, below this number so i think on early teens we are now almost hitting that number uh, i would say okay all right um my second third question is to bharat uh, bharat in your in the ppt comment that you put in you mentioned that suburban has begun gaining traction could you shed more light here like what has happened over the last year what are you seeing today which is making you comment that suburban is gaining traction uh yeah so i think a lot of action has happened over the last one and a half years or so which includes uh, stabilization of asset customer base reconfidence gaining in fact uh, last quarter i think when we met we kind of shared with you that we put up a very aggressive marketing program in the city of mumbai uh, led by atl digital and the full suite on that uh, and i think this quarter we followed up with a very strong below the line activation program as well so a lot of uh, you know uh, what i would call efforts are being taken on uh, building the suburban brand in the western market and uh, we are seeing the first uh, green shoots of the growth uh, trajectory for the business and um, what do you think uh, how big is it going to become over say 1 3 years um, as part of large revenue if you are to put a number there 
Hey, maybe I maybe just con- to continue with the earlier question of yours. Uh, I think two three fundamental shifts that have taken place for us in suburban. Number one is uh, suburban as a as a business was more own asset driven. I think slowly slowly we've shifted towards a franchisee driven business. That is one change that has happened. We also went through a bit of a employee turn or high employee turnover, which also has stabilized quite a bit. And that is what Bharat meant by a lot of effort has gone into stabilizing the ship uh, as it changed hands. Uh, I think the most important thing has been that we are uh, we piloted few marketing programs and we are seeing some response to some of these things. So we now fairly reasonably well know that what really works and what doesn't work. Now coming back to your second question, uh, it's very clearly uh, right now three market approach. Uh, Bombay, Mumbai is number one. And second is uh, Pune, and then third is Goa. And uh, you know that uh, within Maharashtra, Mumbai is the largest market. And I, uh, there's no published data, but I think it's a fairly big market. And uh, and if we get our formula right, uh, that's where we presume that we should actually be doing well. And uh, for us, it's a very strategic market because our LPL presence in Western region has been less. So if it really works well, uh, hopefully government should become a meaningful sort of a contributor to the total business. Okay. And we are giving up the Madhya Pradesh market. If I remember, Suburban had some operations there as well. Yes, yes. So I think there were one or two labs in some of these two, two labs where? Yeah, uh, Indore, Jabalpur, and Riva. Yeah, Indore, Jabalpur, and Riva, I think that, that we are giving up because it doesn't make sense for Suburban to put effort there because LPL is fairly strong in these markets. Okay, got it. Got yeah, it's just a maintenance sort of a thing, but really investment is primarily in these three cities and whatever spillover in the rest of Maharashtra is. Okay, fine. That's it from my end. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prakash Kipadia from Anivet Portfolio Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. Um, you know, uh, Dr. Om, if I were to, you know, take a midterm view, given that, you know, most of the competitive intensity seems behind us, you know, would it be right to say there could be a 10% patient uh, volume growth and with a bit of uh, product mix and realization change, we should be able to grow revenues at 14, 15% over the next three to four years. Is that the right way to envisage the future? Uh, Prakash, I wish I do these numbers. Uh, my, uh, I would hesitate to actually uh, talk about some guidance, uh, but what all I can say is that uh, as an organization, we are fairly well spread out across the country. And as I mentioned in my opening comments, that we want to go deeper and wider. I think this strategy of going deeper in northern eastern market is on its way. Uh, today, uh, in there are 75 districts of UP, a very large population, I think 22, 23 crore of population. Uh, we are number one and way ahead of uh, the number two guy is very, very far behind us. So as this, uh, as the country economy grows and uh, especially UP, we are very well placed to actually gain a lot of market in these places including Bihar, Orissa, uh, rest of North, you name, I think our spread is the, probably one of the best. And uh, I think we know what is really required to re- go deep. That's one thing that we are doing. Second is we continue to put effort to get wider and wider. I think as our footprint grows, uh, we have, uh, and then second thing is also we are trying to look at the business model which remains competitive so that we don't resort to uh, and our cost structure is competitive so that we can compete on price, etc. Uh, while some of this intensity may have slowed down a bit, but we still believe that uh, intensity will continue to remain because this sector has always been competitive from a unorganized sector, smaller labs. It's just that now the organized competition is growing. So market will continue to grow because as evidence-based medicine grows, uh, preventive health checkups go. I think the market will continue to grow. We just have to do, look internally and see that our competitive advantage remains intact. And then hopefully we should be able to achieve what we have set out for ourselves. 
execution, you know, being one third of our business. Uh, so, question, so please uh, yeah. repeat the question. Yeah, this time around, you know, you've given a contribution from tier three and beyond in terms of, you know, revenue contribution. So is it fair to say uh, North and East would be large part of this uh, tier three revenue? And, you know, could you take us through the journey in, in, you know, these tier three cities and beyond? Is it, you know, basic packages? Is it largely B2B or, you know, uh, it is swast fit and you know awareness seems to be increasing there also uh, sure yeah uh, so prakash uh, this tier 3 story is not new we have always talked about this i think for last one and more than two years in my recollection uh, there have been always been constant efforts put up over here uh, on this front um, in this tier three markets, what we have is a classical suite which we do is to first starting uh, first to start to put collection centers. Uh, as we build density of collection centers, we begin to realize what kind of tests sell, etc., which are predominantly routine. But also, what we are now realizing is slightly higher end tests also come in, especially in gynae and infectious diseases kind of uh, portfolio. And uh, as we densify these clusters, we then identify the distance from the nearest other lab we have and start to populate those and that is the reason why we arrived at this number which we just talked about of putting 20 yeah. plus new labs in these towns uh, right. because we already have a collection center network and this allows the opportunity to further densify and go down deeper as Dr. Rome mentioned in his uh, opening speech. Um, so I guess this we have been doing for quite some time. Uh, it is just that it is coming to four from a sizable uh, opportunity perspective now and we talk right. about about it and and would it be uh, fair to say b2b is still a larger portion but now we are seeing traction on the consumer side so uh, prakash we have talked about this many times in the past we continue to believe we are an omni channel player uh, so we are not restricted to b2b b2c we'll pull in all levers because there is an interplay between all the channels a B2B patient today may walk in B2C tomorrow, a B2C may go to a hospital tomorrow. So it's important for us to kind of do an omni-channel play and not just be focused on one or the other channel. Right. So in a given geography, we look at the healthcare ecosystem and the patient or you know, the consumer ecosystem and try and do something around that. Okay. So it's a mix of both in, in this tier 3 and beyond I cities know. also. It can never be okay. either only B2B or only B2C. Yeah. Uh, that is our... Uh, yeah, yeah, my worry was it should not be B2B driven because that seems to be more price conscious as well. No, I was no, no, trying no. to so validate. We obviously manage the mix judiciously. Uh, right. right. And lastly on suburban, you know, is there a app launch uh, planned in suburban? Have we taken some pricing changes, if any, in suburban to grow in Western and specifically Mumbai, because, you know, there seems to be a lot of consumer campaigns which we see in and around suburban now as compared to earlier. So some uh, road ahead for suburban, if you could share. Yeah, so I think we have just begun the journey on building uh, or let us say further strengthening the consumer franchise and the patient franchise along with the doctor network, which will support suburban. So uh, it is going to be a long journey, but uh, we are committed to making that happen. Uh, so once again, in the case of uh, the focus market for suburban, the full suite of omni-channel play will be put into uh, thing. What you're seeing is evidently what is apparent in the outside, which is the uh, B2C plan, but there's also a strong B2B program also being put in play. Talk now. Understood. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anish Devra from Nomura. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. So, uh, regarding the dengue related cases, so the news articles say that the dengue outbreak in this particular uh, uh, season was, you know, much more pronounced and more so in the Delhi and CR and the North India region. So, uh, would you be able to sort of quantify? the dengue related revenues that uh, say Dr. Lal uh, would have seen uh, in this quarter as against, uh, you know, the uh, uh, same quarter in the previous year. Any quantification there would help? Uh, 
Dr. Om, would you like to take this uh, question? No, I think you have the numbers with you. Why don't you share that? Sure. So on dengue, I think uh, we saw September months, uh, you know, having a larger kind of play. And we saw this not only in Delhi and CR, but across uh, north and east geographies. Uh, this has been the past trend as well. Uh, however, this time what we did was, uh, you know, further, you know, we had this bundle portfolio on fever panel also. And that kind of really took off uh, this season because we had a panel, one for three fevers and one for five, five fevers. And uh, this is really what caught people's, uh, you know, the patient's imagination. Because at one go, they could have got uh, tested for the relevant fever without having to go through in a sequential format, which they are doing in the past. So bundling here, again, helped us. And uh, yeah, and I also talked about the hub lab program. So most of our hub labs are equipped with ELISA testing. Uh, which is the uh, gold standard for dengue testing, dengue uh, and so on. So I think we leverage that infrastructure, the collection center, the new digital uh, logistics app to kind of significantly improve our uh, service delivery in the marketplace. Uh, got it. So, so could you maybe add the percentage of revenues, what were the dengue related revenues in this quarter? Or could you just maybe throw some light there? Uh, Bar Bharat, can I just come in? Yes, of course. Actually, you know, we have not been uh, separately giving these numbers, but for your better understanding, let me tell you, uh, uh, every second quarter of every year has a fever season. So whatever jump you see in this quarter, one would have already seen in the last year also the same quarter. But still for you to know what is that jump, normally I've seen that variation is maybe half a percent or one percent plus minus uh, on a total quarter figure. So while it is, the season is very high, but at times this is not more than 1% extra or lower or higher that you see. Exact numbers, we normally don't share it because it just changes, it creates more complexity about uh, these figures. But otherwise it is there last year also in the same, in the same quarter basis. Understood, understood. Sir, uh, so secondly, uh, I was looking at the gross margin levels. So the gross margin for uh, 2Q has come at 79.6%, which uh, seems to be a historically high number, I mean the highest. So uh, just wanted your thoughts around what is driving this gross margin? Are price spikes helping this or uh, are there any you know softening of raw material prices also? And how should we sort of think about this uh, number going forward? What would be the sustainable levels? Ved, can you so, this question? Uh, so let me take uh, Anish uh, Ved here. Uh, so uh, this is both. In fact, uh, one is, of course, what you are saying is price impact. Uh, and second, uh, of operational efficiency has also led to this uh, higher gross margin because the consumption cost, uh, which was, let's suppose, earlier uh, was uh, in the range of 22%, is now came down to 20% or so. So this is uh, uh, because of uh, you know certain test mix also uh, and operational efficiency uh, like Bharat mentioned hub labs and where we are consolidating and you know a lot of opera operational efficiency has came in uh, consumption. So both uh, price as well as operational efficiency and uh, uh, I'm I'm hopeful that this consumption cost is stabilizing here. Okay, so so would these 79, 80% odd uh, loss margins be the sustainable margins to work with going forward? So I, I, I think, uh, you know, if, uh, uh, let's suppose if we have to remove the uh, price impact, uh, then obviously this will be higher and earlier. Okay, okay, okay. I, I just want to add one more thing uh, to this question. I think one is probably what Wade is saying. There may be, uh, because the volume growth is not that high, high as the value growth, so that may be helping this margin as well. Second is uh, mix plays a very important role. Uh, we've usually seen in Q2, our mix uh, is very drifted towards routine test where the gross margin is generally very high. So as we move into Q3 and Q4, uh, routine tests actually will drop and higher end tests actually go up whether gross margins are not that high. 
So don't take Q2 gross margin as a representative number for the year. That's the only request we have. I think what you should look at is what annual figure would be that may be a representative figure. Mm -hmm. Got it, sir. That's helpful. Thanks. I'll join back. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Agarwal from Dam Capital. Please go ahead. Thank, uh, thanks for taking my question. <clears throat> Sir, on the, uh, just on, uh, on the gross margin uh, level, just sort of going back to the question, now, uh, how much further scope do we have uh, with respect to what, uh, there is obviously a, a, a meaningful reduction we're getting in gross margin this year, given the way trends are. Uh, I mean, do we have enough scope, meaningful scope still left to further squeeze out efficiencies in the gross margin level? Uh, no, so. Nitin, uh, so as I mentioned that uh, uh, we are uh, looking that uh, this is stabilizing, I don't think you should factor any further improvement on this. Um, so whatever uh, uh, we are uh, showing now, it is even not representative for the year, as Dr. Om mentioned, because th there is some, uh, you know, mixed change in this quarter which is impacting this gross margin. So on a sustainable basis, I think uh, we should, uh, you know, uh, say uh, about 75%, 74%, 75% kind of uh, margin. Thanks. And uh, secondly, on, you know, on the overhead costs, uh, given the fact that we made a lot of references to uh, start to growing, uh, you know, focusing on, tier, on the uh, tier three markets so on a growth basis going forward, so, I mean, what implications does it have for our operating costs? Uh, I mean, obviously, a lot of the growth is going to come from the franchise use, the fee for collection as a percentage. Well, you know, they're probably at around 14% continues there. But how should we think about uh, other, the other overhead costs uh, when we try to go out in these smaller areas? I think, uh, as Bharat mentioned earlier, uh, see, one is uh, this uh, channel. Of obviously, we have higher, uh, you know, contribution. Now, our business is 45, 46% business is coming from this CC. Uh, and obviously, as a percentage, it is inching up. And so, as a percentage of this revenue share is going up. But uh, this is not because we are, we are increasing the margins of the CC. This is because of uh, mixed change, uh, I mean, contribution of this channel. Uh, like Dr. So can, Hall, I, can, I, can, I, can I just come in there? I'll, be, I'll probably take a little time on this question because uh, it's important to answer this. See, if you open a lab in a tier three town, broad cost of running that lab would not be my point to 60 to 70 lakhs in a year. If you are able to generate two and a half crore of turnover, and 30% of that is roughly 75 lakhs, is what normally we'll end up paying to a collection center if we open them. It's our normal way of growing it. So the moment you open a one lab in a tier three town, the moment you reach two and a half, you are virtually breaking even uh, in terms of collection center versus the lab. So to my mind, as I was answering to Rahul's question earlier, in the short term, you might see a bit of a change up and down, but over a period of time, it is the way of growing our business. But what it, this lab would do for us is that it will help us to open further more collection center as we go deeper in tier four towns. So for us, it's a way of life. I don't think one should look at any dilution of margin. Oh. I hope I answered the question. No, no, I, I, I get a picture. Uh, the other uh, point essentially is that, you know, in terms of uh, the, when we look at the overall uh, cost structure, uh, you know, we've done a phenomenal job over the years, including this year, the way trends are, in terms of managing our, our costs. Uh, you know, while this is a presumably continuous exercise in the firm to keep out eating out efficiencies, I mean, I'm just wondering, uh, you know, how much further scope do we have on an overall level to uh, to eke out further cost efficiencies? And the reason why I talk about that is because in the past we've talked about uh, EBITDA margins essentially stabilizing about 20, 25, 26 percent levels. We seem to be now again trending reasonably higher from uh, beyond those levels, uh, given where H two H one has been. That's mainly because of operating leverage. See, the moment you look at the moment you touch a number of 600 crore, your EBITDA margin is low. up. So I think as a team, we have to find out ways and means of increasing top line. Yes, everything will fall in place. And, and, and just to add, uh, Nitin, as I mentioned in my opening speech, 
maybe this is the opportunity where we can invest in the business and uh, if even if we are improving efficiency operating leverage is coming so it is giving opportunity where we will uh, you know do the investment in the business whether it is technology whether it is newer geography and so on and so forth so i i don't think these uh, 29% or 28% uh, with the margin is a representative margin uh, for the year okay thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of lavanya totala from ubs please go ahead hello uh thank you for the opportunity sir so most of my questions are answered but just one thing on the margins which we are discussing uh so now that with increasing share of bundled services like with improving sales per patient uh shouldn't our margins be better than uh, what it was before uh with operating leverage like it should sustain right i, I... no so sorry i'm um, missed uh, uh, the no earlier part but uh, I, i believe you are asking again on the margins as yeah. i mentioned this uh, maybe uh, you know uh, because operating leverage is very high in our business as uh, dr tom mentioning 600 crore revenue will always give very high margins uh, mm -hmm. uh, but this is again uh, opportunity for us whenever we are getting uh, you know improved margins will invest back into the business so i don't think uh, we should uh, factor in these kind of margins uh, uh, for a longer period is so the sustainable level should be at what level uh, i think around 26% uh, we should uh, see uh, that these are okay. more sustainable margins okay so i was just asking just because with increasing bundled services like even in this quarter with the fever and all the bundled services will give us better operating leverage so that's why i was checking if the sustainable levels will be higher uh, actually okay. bundled services only now is stabilizing at 21 22% of the total revenue so i think it probably stay here for some time is what my sense is Okay, got it, got it. So, just can you help me with the revenue and margin for Suburban this quarter? I don't know if it was earlier covered. Uh, so, Suburban uh, revenue for this quarter is uh, forty-two point seven crore total uh, revenue for the quarter. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, this was last year. How much? Um. so it was uh, 40 crore total but uh, we take out uh, covid out of that uh, mm -hmm. it was 37.5 crore okay on margins uh, margins uh, see margins is about uh, 13 uh, and a half uh, uh, percent but again the uh, we are as we always mention that right now the focus is to improve top line and invest in the business uh, obviously uh, operational efficiency or some of the back end synergies are coming uh, so it is gradually that uh, margins will improve but right now the focus is on top line got it got it thank you thank you so much for the opportunity all the best thank you the next question is from the line of karan vora from goldman sachs please go ahead yeah thank you for taking my question uh so uh, just uh, uh, this for the signal line for the interrupt can you see hands up more yeah is it better now there's some disturbance here uh just a second i think we have lost we have lost the line for karan we'll move to the next question that is from the line of chenil shah from jm financial please go ahead yeah hi thank you for the opportunity uh my first question is on uh, you know the competitive in intensity so uh, you know is there some more room for improvement in the current scenario and uh, you know can you throw some more light on what trends are we seeing and especially uh, how is the competitive scenario from hospitals in the uh, northern region um also if you can talk about uh, you know scope for uh, for the price hikes over the next 2 uh, to 3 years so bharat can you take this question uh, sure 
um, so I think uh, competitive intensity, you know, if you cut it in multiple segments, uh, there are varying kind of degrees. Um, so if you look at online plays, obviously the extra burn which they used to do has come down significantly and they also taken up price increases. So both A and P for them has come down in my assessment, uh, but they also moved up pricing and they are, some of them have publicly talked about the same. Uh, if you look at uh, our regular competitors, I think we all continue to be as competitive as in the past, if not more. And I think that is a way of life uh, for all of us. So I think uh, what we must do is to address competitive intensity segment by segment and not just take a overall macro view. Uh, and But yes, the online intensity has come down a uh, tad and we are also improving our mix and our offering. Our D2C program has really done well and we continue to gain traction on our direct-to-consumer program as well. Uh, as far as price increase are concerned, uh, at this stage, we don't want to make any comments on that. We are comfortable where we are when we are focused on driving the volume growth up. And, uh, you know, we'll figure this out uh, if and when we have to. But our current focus on driving volumes up very clearly. Yeah, just coming back on the competitive in intensity side. Um, so which particular uh, segment is hurting us the most? And what would be the current share of revenue from aggregators to our total top line? Our share of revenue from aggregators is very minuscule, single digits if at all, or lower single digits uh, at the very best, uh, not significant at all. And uh, which particular segment, uh, competitive segment, is would be hurting us the most, or has you know impacted us over the last one or two years? In the last two years back, I think if you look at a two-year history in the past, then online was very clearly the one which was uh, really uh, kind of uh, what I would call uh, uh, giving us a bit of a run, uh, you know, because we were also not prepared for that kind of scenario. Uh, but if I look at today, uh, we are very well equipped internally as a team to be, hand to be able to handle some of these challenges. So... One part is about competitive intensity, but second is about organizations learning ability to be able to implement stuff uh, which will protect us in the future as well. On that metric, we have moved up significantly. Right. I Thanks. would also add uh, one more thing to what Boris just said. Uh, I think more than hurting, what is happening is that this new age players actually were beginning sort of mega trend the way customers were availing uh, diagnostic services. While uh, we had started home collection, but they started doing using tech to really order the thing, paying online, et cetera, et cetera. I think that's something in the last three years. Our teams have done a tremendous uh, work to really catch up. So we are now a fairly well tech company, uh, like any other company. So I think that is one change that I've seen in the last three to five years. But otherwise, yes, the cash burn and competitive intention in terms of advertising, that has always been there, but now to that, that some extent is moderated. Right. And uh, my second question is on the EBITDA margin. Uh, you know, we're guiding for around 26% uh, sustainable EBITDA margin. You know, uh, with, uh, you know, operating leverage playing out uh, in, sub in suburban as well as Dr. Lal, um, is it... Uh, very conservative because see last probably uh, two years we've been having digital spends as well um, you know how much can the new lab investments uh, you know probably offset the operating leverage so basically how much reinvestment would be there uh, you know in the business but you know there are uh, inflationary pressure the cost of hiring is going up a lot of tech talent is required in the system. So all of the costs are also going up. And I think many of you have asked this question as you go to tier three, tier four pounds, what happens to the cost structure? Uh, of course, that will have impact. And in any case, uh, uh, we've always, uh, we've not resorted to price increase. So I rather would uh, maintain the competitive advantage in terms of uh, uh, pricing. And uh, to me, and operate within range down margin so that we are able to actually address larger uh, sort of a market segment and uh, not always resort to the price increases. So our attempt has always been to stay very, very competitive, run the business efficiently, 
and see that we are able to address the uh, all all market segments so that's also driven it's not that we can't increase margin but i think it's important to see that can this 600 crore number move up very sharply when we are in well position to gain much much higher market share because this industry is so fragmented while we may be the india's largest diagnostic company but our market share still would be a single digit so how we go up is what probably our focus is yes that's very helpful thank you for the uh, answer and by the way having higher margin you are also attracting more competition so might as well be range down and then increase our uh, top line okay yeah makes sense thank you the next question is from the line of karan vora from goldman sachs please go ahead yeah thank you for taking my question uh, sorry i got dropped out of the queue last time uh, so uh, uh, basically of uh, on on volume growth uh, can you highlight uh, what what is the patient volume growth for uh, uh, suburban and uh, dr lal core business so just trying to get some sense as to uh, whether most of the growth for suburban is coming from volumes or it is also a price a meaningful uh, factor uh, yeah that is my first question bharat can you tell this yeah uh, so the uh, our total volume growth for the quarter is 5.2% however since covid is going away rt pcr uh, test has gone uh, to a large extent so if you remove only rt pcr our growth for the quarter is 7.7% including suburban Uh, yeah so uh, basically uh, so what would be suburban's volume growth uh, like a suburban base last year to suburban uh, uh, this year and ex suburban the core business volume growth uh, shankar would you like to yeah. shankar uh, i think shankar is with me but uh, he he doesn't have a figure readily available so we probably can offline share with him the numbers are really not available in front of him okay fine fine uh, uh so my second question would be so on margins uh, you previously highlighted to 26% as a sustainable range uh, so uh, with suburban uh, you know kind of ramping up over the medium term uh, uh, so basically should we assume that uh, incrementally over and above 26% you would be uh, in, in investing back in the business or uh, that a flow through could still come in come in and we can probably see uh, you know year on year margin progression or to some extent so i think directionally we will invest back into the business see these high these fluctuations in the margin actually happen on quarter on quarter basis i think when we see them quarter three call we will actually find different picture so that's why uh, you know first half our margin is generally high in the second half so you will see that trajectory going down so i think over a period on a on an annual basis is what we will try and manage this margin and if there is a tendency to for it to go up we'll invest back into the top line because for us growth is most important okay fine that was helpful thank you thank you the next question is from the line of punit pajara from helios please go ahead yeah thanks for taking my question uh, so bharat in your uh, comments in the ppt you mentioned that uh, e account management program uh, has been showing some traction so could you elaborate uh, a bit on that and while you do that could you just spell out the b2b revenue contribution of the consult top line in 1hfi 24 yeah uh, so the key account management program is aimed at our pickup point business which is a b2b business where we are trying to create segments and then uh, give a solution for each of the segments in a very customized form and even within those segments uh, you know tier the customers as let us say abc kind of classification and give differential service uh, this has met with lot of success because uh, we have been able to solve for that particular sub segments problem in a very specific manner rather than try and build a omnibus kind of solution so segmentation of uh, b2b clients uh, is really what the key account management program tries to do 
uh, obviously this is at a very rudimentary stage we can go a lot higher on this count and we'll polish up this program as we move forward on the b2b volume i think uh, the number of contribution is around uh, 20 around 25 30% give or take yeah 25 to 30% as a as a percentage of revenue in first half of this fiscal correct yeah give or take yeah Sure, sure. And my second question is for Dr. Holmes. So, sir, yeah, it's almost two years now since we consolidated Suburban. So, what would have been, you know, the key learnings and some of the uh, mistakes that you would want to avoid uh, going forward while you prioritize in organic acquisitions, especially for South region? So, one learning is, is one of uh, uh, events I must be careful. Don't get carried away. We realize the cohort will suddenly fall so sharply. So I think that's one. So uh, second is, uh, uh, I think second learning is that we must really know that what is very strategic. Uh, for us, Bombay or Maharashtra was very strategic. Uh, there are times when we get uh, leads from other markets where we are already very strong. So we can't afford to pay that kind of valuation that we have done in Western markets uh, because we are already very strong in Northern Eastern markets. Uh, sometimes people tend to benchmark the same value because they expect the same valuation to be. Uh, so one then needs to be careful on that. And I think the third is uh, uh, some of the integration challenges that we face uh, post acquisition. Uh, we would be a little more sort of aware about this and trying to prepare it before we do the transition. Sure, understood. Thank you. Thank you so much for taking my question. I'll join back with you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rahul Jivani from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, uh, hi, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Now, sir, on this four-year value figure, which you called out as 13%, uh, if I look at, if I dissect this number on an ex-suburban basis, then our ex-suburban value figure is somewhere around 10.5%. And if I also back-calculate the volume growth uh, for us on an organic basis, that is still trending around 7%. So both on value as well as volume figure, our growth is still below pre-COVID level. So pre-COVID FY17 to 20, our volume growth was trending around 12, 12.5% kind of a number, which was driving a mid-teens growth for us. So we are still very far off as far as that mid-teens growth on an organic basis is concerned. So can you call out in terms of why we are no, still not back to pre-COVID. Uh... Yeah, yeah. I, I think you're absolutely right. You, it's not only for us. I think overall industry could get, I think the numbers that are in public domain, so everyone's growth is below what they were trending before. And uh, But all I'm saying, directionally it is improving. because. Uh, but otherwise, you're right. It's definitely not in line with what we used to go earlier, which is true for the entire industry. I think the numbers of other companies that are in public domain uh, same to get So, sir, any reason in terms of whether organized players, because you have been pointing out that uh, the competitive intensity in the space is coming down, we have taken price increases as well. So, with these two factors working in our favor, still the growth is not back to what we were seeing earlier. So, Anything in terms of structurally which could have changed or which is changing due to which the growth at an industry level seems to have uh, slowed down? See, I can give slightly my own answer based on the experience that I've had. I think this industry has seen a lot of uh, growth for organized players because they were shift from unorganized to organized in metro, right? It lasts, let's say, 15, 20 cities. Uh, as a lot of players have come in in this area, the market has saturated. Now, the next phase of growth is actually going to come from the next players that come, which is tier 2, tier 3, tier 4. Uh, those towns actually will see the same sort of thing, but they are in transition because doctor influence is still very high. Uh, direct to consumer is just taking shape. So in my view, it's maybe a market in transition, but overall potential for the country is huge. We are a 1.4 million population country. So my sense is that a lot of us grew in large metros to start with, and the base has grown bigger for many of us. So that's why you see a slowdown in growth. 
and uh, also inability to take price increases due to competition, etc. All that has contributed to a bit of a slowdown. But as we go deeper into tier two, tier three, tier four towns, uh, I'm hopeful that this market will again crack open in favor of organized players. Okay, sure, sir. And uh, just one related question to that expect to that aspect. So you are talking about growth in some of these smaller markets. So how do you see the healthcare infra in these smaller markets? Because what we hear from some of the other healthcare players is that the availability of doctors in tier three, tier four towns is very limited. Due to which, if you look at the pharma companies, many of these pharma companies approach these smaller markets to a trade generic or a, a, a retail led distribution business rather than a doctor led approach. So, would uh, 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 would a scant healthcare infrastructure in these smaller markets be a hindrance to your growth in these uh, smaller towns? So, let's start step by step. First of all, is the need for healthcare answer is bigger in these markets. Now, earlier affordability could have been a challenge, but I think relative terms, as the country economy grows, affordability is also going on. I think the challenge is basically access. Uh, I think ecosystem will find its own solution to cater to this market. Uh, I have a very strong sense that distribution of health infra uh, is going to go down top set up. I think government is also giving a big push. I am very hopeful that investment also will go in that area because the market is probably getting right for it to be tapped. Uh, my other thing is access also will get, get improved to tech solutions. I see a lot of things that are happening on telepathology, teleradiology, uh, teleconsultation. Uh, so I think a lot of these solutions will come, which will provide access to these tier three, tier four towns. So overall, I think everybody is eyeing at these markets. So even in hospitals, also I think they may have been they may be done with the metros. Now they have to look into tier three, tier four towns. Overall, I think healthcare will attract a lot of investment in these places. Yes, I agree with you. The shortage of manpower is probably getting resolved through tech solutions. Let's see how it goes. But I am pretty hopeful that they can start and grow in these pieces. Thanks, sir. Sure, sir. That's it from my side. Thank you for answering my questions. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take this as the last question for today. I now hand the conference back to the management for their closing comments. Thank you, and over to you. Thank you, everyone, for being with us on this call today. I hope we have satisfactorily addressed all your queries. If you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Thank you once again, and a very happy Diwali and upcoming festivals, too. I would now request the moderator to close the call. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Dr. Lal Patras, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you. <laughs>